Hello, I'm Somi Aryan. I'm a tech philosopher and the founder of Impeak. My guest on today's podcast is Kevin Rose, co-founder of Proof Collective and Moonbirds, one of the most successful NFT communities in Web3. I've been a member of Proof since shortly after I minted my Moonbird, and it's been fascinating watching Kevin and the team build the community from the ground up. In this conversation, I took the opportunity to pick Kevin's brain on Web3 business models and essentially treated this podcast as a consultation session that many entrepreneurs in the Web3 space will really benefit from. When Kevin joined me for this interview, he had just woken up and barely had his morning coffee. I'm not a morning person myself, so I really appreciated him putting up with all my questions at such early hour. First of all, it was really great to see you in London. I'm so glad you made it because, um, you know, I, I had kind of like lost hope of meeting the Proof team uh, this year because uh, I don't know if you know the story that I couldn't come to New York because of visa, you know? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. I heard that. It, yeah. Even though I'm a British citizen, I couldn't uh, get an ESTA. So I had like prepared everything. You know, bought my proof pass when it was quite uh, expensive so just before, you know, and uh, couldn't get a, an ESTA. And because uh, they said that I was born in Iran, so uh, I had to get a visa. And they've given me an appointment for January 2023. So, like, I have oh, to wait until January to even get a, you know, get an appointment for a visa. It's just crazy. Well, the good news, I hope you can make our conference because, you know, yeah, that'll be a few months later. That'll be great. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm definitely going to be there. And I've never been to LA before, so that will be my Oh, first it's going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, the number one thing that I wanted to talk to you about was the is about the token economy or the, the concept of how tokens are completely differently changing the way that we price things. For example, I'll give you an example. So the business I'm building is basically LinkedIn meets masterclass for Web3. You know, I remember like when I first joined Proof, I was always like talking about the different things I was doing and people were like, oh, you're shilling and you're, you know, you're, you're like talking about your project all the time. I was like, oh, I thought that this was a professional networking environment, you know, and then mm -hmm. uh, I had this chat with uh, Stevie, uh, Amanda, and she said that, you know what, like actually, proof is not really like that kind of environment like people are not there for networking they're there because of uh, they are art collectors but before i bought my pass i was thinking of it as you know like this is the mm. highest place of you know in the nft space where you could you know network and meet other people who are builders and and like you know yeah. So then I wanted to build something like that because there isn't anything like it. I love that you did that. That that is exactly the playbook that I follow where I'm like this doesn't exist it, it should so I'm just going to go build it you know yeah exactly so now uh, I come from a LinkedIn background uh, you know I've been a LinkedIn top voice three years in a row I've written a book about the future of work you know um, I've always been about uh, the future of work and, and networking and you know how uh, how it all comes together in a professional networking environment so now I see that there isn't something like that for web3 so when I'm thinking about how to price something thing like that I see it as okay like LinkedIn is charging me a thousand dollars a year or a thousand pounds a year to get a premium uh, LinkedIn and then when you think of something like masterclass you're paying you know, quite a lot of money for each of these mm -hmm. kind of masterclasses that you're building right so when you put all of that together it seems like the kind of fair amount of money that somebody would pay for a service like that maybe is around a thousand uh, a year, you know, because you're getting both of those things together, right? But when you want to put a price on, on that as an NFT, and considering the fact that with the NFT, most of the time people, uh, uh, they expect it to be lifetime. They don't like it when you put a, you know, a, a date on it and, and it is tradable, right? Then people um, don't see it quite that way, right? You know, they're, they're like, thinking of it in a very different way when when the economy when when the token economy of it comes into mind so if you were in my position in this you know bear market trying to build something like that how would you price something like that and how would you explain it to people because right now i'm having people um, for example in our waiting room so we are doing a different mint um mechanics where people need to pledge they need to apply it's application based and then they need to pledge first and then uh, you know then they will get the NFT. And the reason we are doing that is because we want to make sure that people are not 
looking at this as a you know trading thing and that mm -hmm. they actually really want to be part of it so yeah so would love to hear your thoughts on how you would price something like that yeah i mean there's a, a few things to unpack there i certainly the one thing that just as to, to really follow up on what you just immediately said the application thing <clears throat> is challenging because when you're dealing with a freely tradable nft that means that that it can move into somebody else's hands without them having to apply right so you never know who you're going to get is a mixture and and how the audience will evolve over time which is which is really tricky right so it's something that that i think about a bit but uh on the on the how do you charge for for something um like that uh yeah that's that's a challenging one because in some sense Masterclass, um, you know, they have such a deep back catalog of professional content that when you go there, um, you know, like when I was first introduced to, to Masterclass, I it was a gift I was given um, by my wife. And it was something is, um, is silly and fun is um, a professional basketball player called Steph Curry is one of the best players in the world. And he it was teaching a class on how to shoot three point uh, shots. And I, I'm not going to use that but i found it interesting because i was always curious like what was his philosophy behind how he, he studied the craft and how he became such a great shooter and so that was the reason i was drawn into it but then when i got there i was like holy crap like they have classes on on poetry and negotiation and like all these other things and then i saw the value proposition was deep enough for me to want to go and spend the you know x number of hundreds of dollars per year to to go in and do it. So it's a, it's it's a little bit of a chicken and egg thing where you you need to make sure that the 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 depth is there before you can figure out the the, well, the, the pricing is high enough, you know. It's interesting you say that. So the difference with that first of all we already have about 300 hours of content on there with you know great um, people that we have collaborated with, with Masari, you know, with like Elliptic, you know, like that they are giving us educators. For example, today we have one with AKSTV. So the, so the diff, the big difference is that with Masterclass, you're passively consuming the content. Whereas mm -hmm. for us, it's live sessions. Oh, so I love that. I mean, right. So like, for example, today, Stevie is doing a session, Amanda, and, uh, there are uh, already a hundred people have signed up for it. Um, you know, and and then hundreds of people can watch afterwards as well. And then the other value proposition is that those educators, they are available in our, uh, you know, in our discord, um, not all the time, but like if somebody had a follow up question, you know, they can they can post that. So so right. maybe, maybe in this case, Masterclass is not a, a it's more of a it was more of a creative live example. Do you ever use yeah. the platform creative live? No. OK. Creative Live was was um, is, is still a really popular platform, but um, back in the Web two days, they kind of pioneered a model where you could um, they would send out a, a blast, and it would be you can always watch the content for free, and um, and it was it would always be like multi day content, so it was like really in depth courses. So you know they would do a, a class that was about you know the basics of cooking over three or five days, right or but they're really known for their photography content, like how to become a good photographer. And they, but they covered a wide range of things. And they knew because it was, you know, like four hours each session over three days that there was no way any individual with a professional life could tune into the entire thing. Right. So but it did allow you to tune in and be like, is this a class that I like? And then if it was while it was going live, they would give you one price. And then after it was done, they would charge you a different price. And then there was a, a kind of global price to unlock all of the content all at once, right? So it was a really interesting thing because the aspect of being live and free and open brought in a ton of people. And they knew just by their back of the napkin math that there was, you know, some subset of that that audience that would naturally convert. Let's call it like a you know a percent and a half or something, right? And then they they could do their their the math on that. Then they knew that there was a long tail of sales that would have happen after the fact, and so they would get well known speakers. But it was a way that they got started without having to have that deep catalog. But it sounds like you already have um, a, a pretty deep uh, you know um, amount of of stuff there. I it's you know it's it's really hard to figure out pricing models. Like there's no perfect science for all this especially in a bear market like this if this was the bull and everyone is just desperate for information 
um, then I would say, you know, you could, you could go out there and, 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 and have a lot more flexibility on, on the higher end of the pricing spectrum. It, it's challenging because even if you look at our podcast numbers, right? Like when just, to, just being completely transparent, when you look at the proof podcast, like it's down from where it was during the peak because there was just so much interest in NFTs. Like everybody wanted to listen to NFTs. Even if you didn't own one, you were like, tell me about what the craziness is going on over there, you know? And so we'd have a lot more natural search traffic. Now, we still have a, a hardcore kind of dedicated audience that's there, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. But it's, it just goes to show you that these things like as the, you know, bag cat or the, the, the actual, you know, people, a lot of people, lot of people are treating it as an investment. And as that, that opportunity disappears, then so does the audience, right? So it's tough because you're in a really, you're in a, in a position where you're in the, the worst part of the time to launch something like this, right? And, um, but you're still putting out great content. So I guess the question is really, um, if, if I was in your position, it, it really depends on how much you need to survive and pull this off because I wouldn't be running this as like, it's time to make a killing at this. What I'd be doing is building a hardcore dedicated following. You know what I mean? Like just going out there and saying, Hey, we're willing to give away most of this. We'll get by as a business just to pay the bills. And we'll build, build, build. We'll get really strong brand advocates and people that really believe in what we're doing. And then when that the market does return, as it inevitably will, you'll be so well positioned with a huge back catalog of information. And and then you could say, hey, um, you know, that kind of like, I don't know how you position it, whether you call it like that free, you know, three month trial or six month trial or whatever it is, or the discounted pricing for the first six months is now over and we're all returning to that 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 model and this is what the new base level is for this um or, or you can also just you know the way they call it like grandfathering people in where you're saying you were the early supporters so you get you know half off but the new ongoing price is is x right um i think the most important thing is to be flexible flexible with these models uh and, and not be set in stone and remember that it's always easier to reduce the price than it is to increase the price <laughs> So that's that's the challenging part. But now it doesn't seem like and there, there's tricky ways to do the, the the price reduction. Like it's 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 easier to to reduce the price um, in the form of saying it's it's already half off, but it'll re eventually return to this than it is to say uh, now it's one hundred dollars a month. And guess what? Now we're increasing prices by double. Right. You see what I'm saying? There's a small little nuance there. But um, yeah, I don't have a really great answer. I, I, I wish it was better. But because um, we give away all of our content for free. <laughs> yes, so. you do. but then but you are making, um, you know, obviously you've had the, the collectible, right? You've had the, the Moonbirds. So um, so uh, I'm going to try and explain better what I'm thinking in terms of this business model. And you can uh, I'd love your feedback on that. So what I'm thinking is we have a Genesis pass, which is uh, it's going to be 450 maximum and uh, 375 of them are already out. The floor price for it is 1.2 ETH right now. So, That's great. Uh, yeah, so actually it, it minted for 0.1 and a lot of people didn't mint. So people, you know, the mistake that we made, and this is again, going back to the psychology, the mistake that we did, first of all, we did our big Twitter space with like G Money and Cantino and Zeneca, everybody. We did that like three weeks before the mint, be mm. uh, instead of like the day before the mint. It's too far. And, yeah and, and yeah and that was because that's because i used to be a tv producer so i was like too well prepared and um and and uh, so people kind of forgot because i remember after that uh, where, um, you know that big uh, twitter space people were like messaging me from everywhere like oh, i want to get on the way uh, allow list the second mistake that i made was that i didn't over allocate the uh, allow list we are in a bear market and um i mm. i gave it only three hours and, you know, like yes. I, I went with the Moonbird, you know, like model. And I was like, it doesn't work in this model, in this market. So I didn't over allocate. And then what happened during the, uh, in the it started okay. And then what happened was that people were looking at each other waiting, you know, this, the, the, mm -hmm. the game theory, right? People were waiting uh, for each other to mint, right? So so people were asking me on Twitter, is this over allocated? And I, I said, no, no, it's not over allocated. You have three hours. <laughs> And then people didn't mint, right? So instead of like me causing some kind of FOMO, people didn't mint. And then I was like, okay, I cut supply drastically, like drastically. I was like, all right, like we are we are cutting supply. 
I kept uh, 250 reserve and the 250 reserve that I kept uh, 120 of them were going to, uh, you know, go to people that we already had some premium members. So I cut it basically to 200 mintable, and then uh, kept the rest in the in the treasury. And and immediately as soon as I cut the supply, you know, people minted out really quickly, and then the floor price went up. And and like it just yeah. went up and up and up, and it just hasn't come down. You know, like it's it went at one point it was like 1.5. So I was like, okay, I, I learned a really important lesson there. So now what I'm, what I'm trying to think of here is because it's not just about the content, the content is really, to me, the content is more like a, an add on. It's the big thing that we are doing is uh, facilitating networking and people being able to, you know, build their thought leadership, build market themselves and, and like get jobs or get opportunities, get, you know, get consultancy opportunities, things like that. So. There is the Genesis group that is like more like thought leaders, people like AKSTV, you know, like we, like I just gave one to G Money. I, I, I will, I will give you one. Ryan Carr said, you know, like so, so we've got all, a lot of the people who are there. They have their own projects, or they are thought leaders in the space. They are, they are the people who are putting on sessions on our platform, um, and uh, and then uh, the the gen two is for people who want to watch that content who want mm. to network with each other but they but they don't get the additional support for their project you know like if they are like a builder or you know if they want to, if you want to be an educator on the platform you have to have a genesis a genesis pass because there's like there the conversations that go on in the genesis you know you can think of a little bit like what you've done with proof and moonbird so it's a little bit more like that right so there's like that tier so what i'm thinking for the long term how can i make this sustainable is that because i, I can't make it sustainable with like 450 there and then like 10,000 there right i want to build a platform where by the end of 2027 we have got 3 million users that's what i want to do right mm -hmm. so so the way i'm thinking is that these ten thousand people that are going to be our gen 2 members we are going to train them and we are going to make them into an army that are going to go out and then they're going to teach web3 to other people mm -hmm. so so after these ten thousand, we may not even have another collect uh, you know another like tradable collection we may have only um we may go straight to uh, soulbound tokens because it's, it will be like, you know, we have the, the 10,000, you know, these are like our like core, you know, fans that, that they are, you, you, because like when I'm looking at the, our current Genesis holders, they're so loyal, man, so loyal. I, like they love me and they're like, so, you know, they really like so behind me. Um, so uh, I think that in a similar way, if I can build a similar kind of relationship with those 10,000 people, then, uh, you know, maybe I think that the the tradable part of it should be only ten thousand maximum, twenty thousand. Mm -hmm. After that, we move to soulbound tokens because we are an educational networking platform. Mm -hmm. So then we say the soulbound tokens. Initially, we say okay, you get it for three years, then you get it for two years, then it becomes for one year. So as it grows, you get less and less. But but then you need that network, so you still buy into it. Sure, I mean it. It makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of um... The thing that is challenging for me, especially in Web3, and I'm just, I, I, it's hard for me to, um, I'm, I'm just speaking about my own business here. So please know that this doesn't necessarily apply to what you're building, but it, it, it things change so quickly that, you know, every, it, it's hard to have, a, uh, at least for me, it's hard to have visibility outside of six months, you know, because there is so much. I mean, you see like um, momentum shifts with with a couple projects doing something new right like there'll be like i don't know i'll give you a random example not we're not ever going to do this but this is an example of um you know nouns cutting their discord right you, you don't know how many other big project leaders not well not a ton i'll just say two or three reached out to me and were like should we cut our discord too because i don't what really do you, like my what discord does it mean? what do you mean by cutting the discord meaning then they turned it off wow okay yeah they they, they turned it off completely and they were like, uh, we're not we're not going to do an official discord anymore. And the conversation is going to go on to Twitter or it's going to go on community run discords that are about our project. Um, but we're not going to have an official discord. And, you know, there's there was a bunch of a couple project, big projects, uh, uh, I think probably two or three of them that came to me and were like, I, I, I kind of like that. I, I don't want to I don't want to have to do this anymore. You know, like I don't want to have to do this discord anymore and and fight these daily battles. But 
I, I just feel like the tools that we're using, the platforms that we 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 like, and just all of this is just like so rapidly evolving that I, at least for our team, what I try and do is say, okay, what do we know to be true, and what do we want to go and tackle in the next six months? And it, it's it's not like a static six months because things can change inside of that those windows. But it's also a rolling six months. So it's like, you know, things kind of evolve as you're going along. And anything above and beyond that, we may have some assumptions and some kind of like gut checks of what may or may not work, but we're not going to consider it like set in stone. Uh, it'll just be completely flexible if it's outside of that window. And, you know, I would just encourage you that in building in Web3 that, um, you know, it, it's these... All the everything you said sounds awesome. I just don't know if it's going to hold to be true that far out because it's probably going to take you, you know, a while to get there, right? So it's like I I would put in in and, and granted like we have these big long kind of like you know um, year long plans that break break down major projects and milestones by by month, um, and there's buckets for every type of thing. There's like buckets for everything from community giveaways to live events to uh, major features for the website to um, major collection drops to artist collaborations to like, and it just keeps going down. And then it goes across all the months. And we're saying, okay, our our kind of thing is like, can we have a monthly touch point with the community that's meaningful? Something where people can say, oh, they did something really cool this month, right? Because Web3 is all about about just momentum driven excitement. Um, and we're not doing it for the for the hype, but just for the to let people know we're continuing to building because in the absence of like information in the absence of of you know me tweeting or participating in a live discord every day which i can't do um people are like what are they doing you know are they are they are they, are they like sitting on the beach somewhere and not not working or whatever, you know so i i would say that you know if i were in in your position as a builder i would just say okay listen like this is what we think we're going to do with the soulbound tokens and all this other stuff but let me tell you what we're going to do next month and the month after that and the month after that and just hit those and and the nice thing about the where i've gotten burned before is you know i mean if you go back and look at the very first um future proof where we talked about all the stuff we wanted to build and we're like this is what we're going to build over the next year you know and and it was just like life happens in a bunch of different ways and web three happens in a bunch of different ways that takes you down these different roller coasters up in, in different directions. And um, we held to a lot of it, but some of it, we completely changed, you know, and it's a little bit of egg on your face. If you promise too hard and, and you set too, too much, much structure there. So if there's anything I've learned, it's like saying always prefacing everything you say with like, this is where we think what we think we're going to do. But let me tell you what, what we're certainly going to do over the next 60 days, right? And then and then just keep evolving it from there. But everything you said sounds really, really valid. I I, I worry about um I worry about large communities and expectations set around utility with large communities because the larger it becomes, the harder it is to maintain, the more people expect things, and the more room there is for disappointment. So I'll give you a great example. Uh, I had a conversation with an artist yesterday that is, um, uh, I would say, uh, not fully blue chip, but a pretty damn well-known artist where you, we'd all know if I said the name right now, but I don't want to expose who they are. And they're working on a big project. Um, they were kind of a little bit concerned about um, the, the space and just the timing, like everyone else is, for dropping something new. And, um, you know, the conversation was like, well, would this be interesting to have underneath the proof un umbrella? Like where it's like, you know, it's another collection that proof kind of like, you know, you know, Yuga came out with this model where they bought me bits and they bought, you know, uh, crypto punks and, you know, they, they kind of stopped, but is there a world where you're just a media company and you hold like, you know, 10 different collections or 15 different collections and you maintain those audiences. And I said to them, I was like, this, this is, um, it's a slippery slope because it's just more mouths to feed, you know, and it's more, and if you spread yourself too thin, um, you're you're really going to uh, it, it's just really challenging and it's very expensive, like um, and especially with royalties going away, you have to be really thoughtful on how you and I think this is really applicable to what you're building. You have to be really thoughtful about where that revenue comes from and how you get people to, you know, 
because because you're going to live or die by the ongoing second some of the your revenue is going to come from that secondary big, a big component of it right so it's like you really want that to work and um you know it's it's when you have a collection of 10,000 people that you're trying to provide for if you're doing something meaningful for them you know if you're if you're like for example with um you know even just with the frame thing that we we did recently with the gold nesting rewards you know those frames are are not inexpensive right like if you look at the website they're several hundred dollars and you go in there and calculate that times 10,000 <laughs> you're well over a million dollars in 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 product to to buy for your community right and so it's like it, it, you have to um it, it's it's challenging because at the same time you you're you're rewarding people for doing awesome stuff inside of your community but at the same time you, you those are, that's the dollars that we spend on engineering talent and other things that you you could do internally so um i just want to when you're thinking about your 10,000 base my only piece of advice and it would just be very, be very careful that it's stuff that you can deliver like content yeah, um it's like, absolutely yeah absolutely. yeah the yeah, 10,000 so the, the only people who are going to get you know that type of utility that you mentioned is going to be the 450 people who have got the genesis pass you know right. uh, everybody else yeah everybody else is going to get basically content and also opportunity to network with each other you know but but uh, the only the 450 people are the people who are going to get most of my time my attention and you know like the and my big for example i was thinking that at some point at some point for example i will maybe buy a few proof pass proof passes right because one of the things that quite a, a lot of people would like is blue chip access and then i could once a month you know uh, i could lend it to different people in our you know genesis community you know so that they can get and and they are all thought leaders they're great people you know and, and maybe they don't necessarily have or want to you know spend 100 100 ETH, you know, or 50 ETH or whatever you know on a proof pass right so these are some of the things that i could do these are like you know ways that i can help them elevate their network right but mm -hmm. with the 10,000, we are actually starting the, uh, the, we are doing it in stages. Um, we've just played, we've had about 350 pledges for uh, the first phase of, uh, uh, of the 10,000 that we're doing. And it's only at 0 0.08, like it's only a hundred dollars. It's nothing. Mm -hmm. So people can't expect a lot for that. You know, I tell right, them that right. you, you have to think of this. You're, you're spending a hundred dollars in your own, you're investing a hundred dollars in your own, um, you know, uh, personal development. It, what did they receive for that? They get access to all the live sessions on the content and- it, But that's via an NFT session. though, right? Or yeah. no, that's just an access. Yeah, it's so an they NFT. receive an NFT. NFT, yes. And which one did they receive? What What is the name of that one? It's the Gen 2. So Gen like, 2. Gen 2. Okay, so here's the problem. Here's the, here's the crazy problem. Um, it's not that the people that spend $100 uh, that are gonna be pissed. It's the people that spend five thousand dollars because the price has gone up like crazy because you started to gain some reputation, and then, you know, this is this is the That's issue. That's why I've set the I'm I'm setting the uh, royalties at ten percent because of my yeah. And actually, I think that uh, let's talk about royalties because I think that for our kind of businesses, royalty should be more like fifty percent or thirty percent. It doesn't make any sense for us because for for every new person that comes in i right. have to spend time like my team has to spend time no i know to this, them to this you know is to the tricky them. part this is the very and it, because people hard, side right like it, it will not sidestep hard. the royalties right and yeah. so there has to be a way to enforce that stuff it is very is very challenging i know exactly what you're saying though because it's it's mm -hmm. it and it's especially difficult imagine someone in my position where it is we are art like moonbirds are little pieces of art and they're also utility right so it's like it, it's really challenging because, you know, we we sold them at two point five, and 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 then you have people that buy them at five, ten, twenty, thirty, and then you're like, okay, wow, like the expectations have changed drastically. Or like moon, uh, you know, proof. I I bought my proof yeah. for seventy four ETH. So seventy four ETH is very different to people who minted for one ETH. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, that's that that's the challenging part. It's it's like in some sense, and I, I've talked to my team about this. It it you need a, especially for it, it it's challenging. I I feel both sides of the equation because one side is I'm licking my wounds. I've had a tough go at these NFTs. I'm just trying to to buy or sell or get out of something where I don't have to pay these royalties, right? Because like I, I I need the cash, and there are people certainly that are in that position. So I feel for those people. Then you have projects that are like. 
I can't afford, I have one friend of mine that runs a project that is, is like, I can't afford my staff anymore, you know? And like, I didn't take venture capital. And so if, if, and half of my sales are going through royalty free, um, you know, marketplaces, how am I going to support this, this, this crew? Like, and how am I going to build for this audience? So in some sense, the audience is shooting itself in the foot by avoiding the royalties because now the people, the builders that are on the back end of that, that are paying salaries, that are paying employment taxes, they're paying insurance, that are doing all these things, they're not going to have the, the cash to do that. And so, yeah, it's it's tricky. I I almost uh, you know I've talked to my crew about like maybe there is a new layer two that sits on top of Ethereum that doesn't allow for token wrapping, that doesn't allow um you know there there aren't bridges to to pull them into another world where they can be wrapped and and. And meaning that when something can't be wrapped, it you can enforce, do things like enforce uh, royalties um, and and not have them sidestep certain marketplaces. And you know, there's there's it, it's messy. There's like uh, there's always it, uh, if you figure out a way to enforce royalties, there's always a way to kind of sidestep it in some fancy way. And it's not to screw people over. It's just to say if you're buying one of these then you're you're we need to support this ongoing whatever it is because it's not just a it's it's well, I, I'm uh, on the, in the camp of we should always be paying royalties because if you, I want to support the artists as well. But take that aside for a second. There are real businesses that need this ongoing because they're not charging monthly fees. And on year five, they need to have the ongoing royalties to, to pay the staff. So it's it is an, it's a challenging thing. And yeah, you know, my um, burn rate right now is around fifty thousand dollars, or or like you know. If I if I cut quite a lot of things and we don't do any more development, just maintain it's around thirty thousand you know dollars. So uh, just to maintain what we already have. So right. I have a solution to that, and I think this. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. I think the solution could be that we need to manage it in a way that the floor price doesn't go too high. And and the way that we would mm. manage that is that um, once you reach a certain threshold then you um, you can provide for at least for us it, it, I think this would work let's say for example we have 450 um, you know uh, Genesis tokens and people get in they they will buy those because they want the support they want access to because if you are a Genesis holder you can put on your own sessions on the platform if you have uh, a business that gives you visibility to 10,000 holders and then to and also we can make a lot of those sessions free and like allow a lot of new people also also watch them. So um, so that means you want that exposure. So you are willing to buy, like literally yesterday I had a, a call with a uh, you might know of them Venture Capital X uh, with the uh, 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 you know two founders. And when I explained to them what we do, they immediately went and bought, they bought four of the tokens. Oh, that's amazing. They, they bought four of the tokens. And then when they bought it, somebody else saw that it was, it was like flying and, and they bought it too. So I, so we sold like five tokens off the floor yesterday. So I think once people understand what we are trying to do, they would want to buy it. So let's say once this token price gets to around 10 ETH at that point, and, and you have no more in your treasury, then what you can do is, um, uh, I'm thinking about then introducing a pro token. Uh, so this is like the Genesis token. So to, to introduce a new token, which is um, which basically gives you all of the same benefits, but it doesn't give, but you but it's not tradable. You know, so basically it's a total bound token. So it's not tradable. You get all the same benefits. It's not tradable, and uh, and also our tokens are upgradable. Uh, so it, it, they all start at base camp and then they go to the next level heights. And then, you know, as you become more engaged in the society, in the mm -hmm. community, they uh, they kind of go kind of like what you're doing with your nesting. Right. But but it's what we don't have. Uh, we don't have nesting. It's more about based on engagement. Mm -hmm. So um, so so then we can have a soulbound token and say, you know what? Like, let's say, for example, if I wanted access to the proof community and you told me, are you willing to pay seven ETH? rather than 70 ETH, right, and get access to the Discord and get same access, come into the, you know, uh, the proof party, meet the team, mm -hmm. which is what I really wanted to do because I, I'm a builder. I wanted that access because I, I need that exposure and, and, you know, to have this kind of conversation. And I and we wouldn't be having this conversation if I was in Moonbirds or in Proof, right? But if I could buy that access with 7 ETH instead of 70 ETH, I would do it. Do you see what I mean? And at yeah. that point, it means that the the then the price of the 
um, the other token doesn't need to be that crazy high. So right, yeah, it's it's kind of tiered. It's kind of tiered access, yeah. depending on what you what you what you want. Um, yeah, the only other way you can do it is is increase in and in, in produce more supply and and have that be a more of a dy dynamic thing. But that's just a pain in the ass right there. So it that's is. one it to, is. one to avoid. Um, yeah, this is this is challenging stuff. I'm, I've, I love that you, uh, on my first cup of coffee, you dropped the big hard problems <laughs> Trying on to, me. I'm really challenging your brain yeah, there, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so um, I wanted to uh, pick your brain a little bit about how you manage the, uh, you know, but, but you come from Web2 background, so you didn't know how challenging the token uh, mindset and, and, and the, um, game theoretical aspect of it would be um and you you had to discover that the hard way you know when when we uh, i i was one of the lucky people who actually minted a moonbird so i minted my moonbird i came into the discord and i was like wow the price is going up and everybody is like talking about it excited about it um and of course at that point people didn't uh, think that there would be a, a a um time that it will you know the price would fall uh, the way that it has in the bear market. How do you manage that? Um, and, and were you prepared for that? Did you expect that to come? Yeah, I, certainly, you know, we, we we didn't know. I remember internally, we, we knew that there was a lot of demand for the, the initial mint. Um, so we were confident we were going to sell out. And then we knew there would be some secondary people that got in there that just wanted to flip it and, and, and sell right away. Um, <clears throat> but we didn't know where it would land. You know, it's like, it's impossible to predict where these things are going to be. Um, you know, whether it was going to be five ETH or four or whatever it was, but we didn't certainly expect the craziness that happened in the following days and, and kind of weeks after that, it was just insanity. Like I, I don't, no one could have predicted how, how crazy that was. Um, so it was a, it was, it was a big shock, but you know, this stuff is like, it's like once you set it free, it's completely out of your control. Like there's there's nothing you you can do. You can just keep be, being who you are. And you know, um, when I when I totally when I, I even fast forward to today, like when you take a look at the prices and where we're at and what who we are as a collection, the way that I approach it is, um, you know, it, it's it's more or less just the same in that we we have what we, we know what we want to build and we're, we're set out to do it over the next six months at a time. And, um, nothing has changed on that front. So it's, I think, I believe that people, there will be a lot of people bailing on projects in the next, you know, few months. I think that a lot of projects that, um, and I don't mean consumers, I mean, creators, I think there's going to be a lot of projects that say, and I don't know that this is necessarily their fault. Though there'd be some that are saying, "Listen, like the secondary is just not there." Like um, there was one project that I was talking to that had a decent amount of cash in the bank, like you know, six figures, like high six figures, and said, "Hey, listen, it's similar to what you were saying a second ago, where they were saying my burns a hundred thousand dollars a month. Um, should I go and spend you know the next six months and just burn out of capital?" Or should I actually just put things on maintenance mode and and still support the community in some lightweight ways, but you know, bank this cash for a, a different purpose or a different day or a new project or whatever? And I think a lot of founders are gonna say, "Hey, why am I burning burning through all this capital right now when there's nothing's happening?" Like I've seen projects launch like insane new features and it doesn't move the market at all like there's like new things coming out and you know or they'll be doing all types of things to reinvigorate and excite the the community and just you know people have left they just don't they don't care so it's um it's it's one of those things where i i think with those that that go away the people that stick through it and are continued to build over the next couple of years you know, when things pull out, uh, people will look back and say, you know, who was who was with us this, this entire time and and building and hopefully setting up an infrastructure for the future. And I, I, I hope that, um, you know, those projects are are then rewarded for for all that hard effort. And that, that's the camp that I'm in is, is we're just going to continue to build. And um, we're, but we're in a very lucky situation that we have the capital to do so. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I, I, I also, I think like I'm just about going to survive it, and um, but I, but we will, and uh, uh you know, and, and that's going to be meaningful in a way. The bear market is really good for us. I love it because it means that people are a bit less busy. So like, imagine even getting time with you would have been much harder, you know, if if we were in a bull market, right? So so people are willing to come on our platform. Like Ryan Carson is coming on. G Money is going to be doing a session every six weeks. You know, Zanica does a session once a month. So we've got some amazing people. Uh, you know, just Justin Musil even uh, is going to come in and do a session. So and I would love for you to do it. I know you are so busy, but it would be so meaningful. Um, okay, last question. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about your family, if you don't mind. I don't know. I've I've, I've never heard you talk about it much, but would you have been able to gain the level of success that you have without, you know, your wife supporting and, uh, you know, being in the background? Because I no. always think that women find, like I chose not to have children um, and family. I don't actually have any family in the UK. So I think it's so much harder for women. Um, so I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you go to my my website, uh, my personal website, you'll see that's the very first thing that I mentioned on on the, the site. Um, uh, and in the it's for good reason, it's because I I you know especially after you have kids, like you know I when, when I started a lot of my earlier ventures, I you know I wasn't married and I was kind of just like I had the flexibility of being like a entrepreneur that could just run and do whatever. Um, which was quite nice. Um, and when we, we had our first child, it was clear, you know, everything has changed and the second one even more so. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's just the, the, like this, this conversation this morning, like well, what's happening right now behind this closed door is my kids are getting ready to go to school. They'll walk out the door with mom in about one minute at eight 30 and then they have to walk, you know, 15 minutes to school. And, you know, there was food that was made, lunches that were packed, backpacks that were put together, like the whole thing is just a, a, a huge undertaking. And that's just like the, the bare minimum. Like there was, you know, yesterday Zelda was at the doctor's office at noon because my wife picked her up from school, had her finger x-rayed because she had slammed her door on a finger and broken part of her thumb. Uh, like a, when I was gone in Europe, she had broken her finger. And, you know, my wife spent three hours in the emergency room and just like all this stuff was happening behind the scenes while I'm sitting there, you know, cheersing people on stage halfway around the world. Right. So without that supportive part partner and structure without Daria, like um, it would just be impossible, you know, and and, she, and her her flexibility to sacrifice her own career to make this happen. She's a lot smarter than I am. She's a Ph.D. in neuroscience and um, is, is, you know, tr trying to work on her next book. And it's just, um, it, it's, she's, she's put in a ton of sacrifice. And so, um, you know, we, we, I, I try and help out where, where possible, um, with odds and ends here and there, and then, you know, try and help out with things like getting a, a nanny to help her with some of this stuff. Cause it's a lot to juggle two little kids. Um, and then, you know, freeing up her time. Like we were just having a conversation yesterday where, we're opening up a little podcast studio with with lights and stuff and it'll look really awesome and it's not too far from our house and i said hey listen like i know you want to get back to your podcast like please when we're not using our studio hop in there and use it like get record your podcast it's gonna have a professional setup there like you'll be good to go like let's let's make things easier so that you can get back to your professional career because it's not fair for me just to be the only one having a career especially like in a, kind of the prime of our lives right now so yeah, your a supportive uh, partner is is essential. It's 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 essential, and it's um, it's it's not lost on me that that a lot of this, especially this crazy life that I'm living with, traveling around so much um, over the next you know year, uh, is is just you know travels especially hard on the family structure because then you're you're one person playing defense versus two. Um, but yeah, it's it's a huge huge piece, um, and there's even little things like. Yeah, like I'm going on this um, seven day uh, little retreat thing in, in December um, that I've, I've been wanting to do for a couple of years now. Um, and it's completely offline where you don't have any uh, conversation. And I talked to my wife and she's like, you need this, like, go, go for it, you know, and it's like just having that her support there is is it's amazing. So, yeah, thanks for bringing that up because it yeah. is so important. 
I would love to have her on the podcast, actually. I would love to talk to her. You know, when I first started in Peak, it was called Fempeak. Oh, no way. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was all focused on women. And um, and then I realized that it was not scalable. It was very, very difficult because it was very hard to get enough women into the space and into technology. So I pivoted to Impeak. So the first 50 or so episodes of my podcast are all with women. And that's why we have oh, so crazy. many women on our platform. So many so many of our educators are women. So um, if, if you're watching, Oh, she would love that. Yeah, would love to talk to her. Yeah, yeah that I, sounds great. I just great. wanted to acknowledge that. And, um, you know, like... I think it's important to be open to the fact that, uh, you know, and, and openly talk about the fact that as a woman, if you want to build a really big business, you know, this is my second business. I have another successful business in, in Web2, which is part of why I'm able to afford to do, you know, like I don't need to make money from in peak. I, my, my life is paid for by that other company. But I just wanted to kind of like acknowledge that so many women have to sacrifice in the background for their husbands to be successful. Like a hundred percent. And it's not the stuff you necessarily want to do. Like it's like childcare is not fun. Like it's, it's challenging. It's challenging. You're dealing with little irrational beings and, and don't get me wrong. You love them to pieces, right? Cause they're like, they're little ex natural extensions of you. And there's so many special, amazing moments, but they're, they're not rational. <laughs> so it's like, um, you know, it's draining. And I think so many people just expect, um, you know, there to be this like natural mom or natural dad uh, uh, instinct kicked in and like, oh, it's you, you're, you're, you're just, you just, just like, it should be your thing, you know? And it's like, that's not true. It's, it's, just, it's okay to t say it's challenging. It's okay to say I'm having a difficult day, you know? And it's like, um, yeah, so it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's crazy, but it's, um, it's, it's, it's fun at the same time. I get these cute little art drawings that back here on my wall that they make, oh. me, make me up now. It's awesome. That, that's so cool. Look, Kevin, I know you're, we're at time. Uh, I, I know how busy you are. I really appreciate, uh, you spending your valuable time with me. Please do introduce me to Daria. I, yes, I, I will I do. Her. This is, this is so close to my heart. It's so important to me. Uh, you know, it, it, I really want to make sure, you know, at Impeak, uh, what, one of the things I've done is uh, I've given a, a, a lot of uh, scholarships to women um, from for our, you know, our uh, initial NFT. And a couple of them actually sold it, but um, that's OK. You know, it, it, like I did my my best. Right. So I'm I'm really trying to build a as equal as possible, uh, you know, community. But, um, you know, it's something that's very important to me. So I would love to. Yeah, I uh, appreciate that. Awesome. Well, thank all you right. for all the good work that you, you do and, and for having me on today. And thank um, you so much for your praise, yeah, if, there's, if there's a way I can do some type of class that that doesn't require a ton of prep work. No, uh, no prep work is required. <laughs> I promise you. We'll do one that requires no prep. You just turn on, uh, turn up and, and people will ask you questions. It, it's very interesting. I love that. All right. I love I love to to, to be an open book and, and have the hard questions. So that's yeah, it's, fun. it's exactly like a podcast, but there will be like a live audience. So it means so much. I would love to have you. That would be so cool. Great. All right. Well, Sammy, thank you so much. Thank and you, um, we'll talk soon. Cheers. I hope you enjoyed this conversation with Kevin Rose. Not that Kevin needs a shout out. But be sure to follow him on Twitter if you aren't already. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe to it on Apple, Spotify, or any other one of your favorite podcast channels. And don't forget to give the five-star rating and write a review. The full interviews are also available on my YouTube channel, The Somi Ariane Show.